Hello everyone, I'm Henry, the senior pastor at Bidwell Press, and I want to welcome you to this online prayer service. So glad that you are joining us. Tonight we are going to be centering our time around the Serenity Prayer, a famous prayer that was composed by Reinhold Niebuhr in the early 1940s. But before we do that, we are going to be hearing three famous pieces of music from an oratorio called The Messiah by the composer Handel. And it's a composition that speaks of the redemption of God's people, and the performers are David and Darius Scholes, who are musicians at Bidwell Presbyterian Church and who teach and lead music at Chico State University. May the music center your hearts, your minds, and your souls. Oh, 
Well, I first just want to thank David and Dara so much for blessing us with that beautiful music and those inspired words that have encouraged and lifted up so many throughout the centuries. Thank you so much. One of the things that I love the most about Handel's Messiah is that it is a reminder that in spite of appearances that God is in fact still in the driver's seat. The Messiah tells the story of God's redemption for our lives throughout the Old and New Testaments. And we need that reminder today, don't we? That in spite of appearances, that God is in fact in control of human history, in control of your life and of mine. 
And in light of COVID-19, we can experience a significant sense of loss of control, can't we? Because all of a sudden, our schedules are turned upside down. All of a sudden, the world economy has shifted. All of a sudden, my kids are doing school from home instead of going to school uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. And all of a sudden, we may be wondering about job security, uh, or perhaps we've already lost our jobs, and we are pondering what the future will hold for us. And so we need to know that God is, in fact, leading and directing. He's guiding our lives. And as we turn now to the serenity prayer, we can experience a sense of peace in our hearts by continually handing our lives over to our God. The serenity prayer by Reinhold Niebuhr in the early 1940s is is very well known, but what's so interesting about it is that most people know the first third of the prayer. It has been often recited and prayed at groups like AA. It's a common liturgy at AA meetings, and it's known in, in pop culture, and many of us maybe have read it online, but oftentimes we know just the first third of the prayer. And tonight we are not only going to be learning and praying the first part, we will be reading the other parts too. And here's how the prayer goes. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. And here's the rest of the prayer, the lesser known part that reads like this. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as a pathway to peace, Taking, as Jesus did, the sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that you will make all things right if I surrender to your will, so that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with you forever in the next. Amen. Well, this is not a prayer that can be found in the Bible it is, in fact, one that has significant biblical support. And so, as both Tammy and I pray it, we will make references to several scripture passages in order that our lives would be steeped in God's love and God's truth and God's mercy and grace for my life and for yours. Let's come before him now in a time of prayer. Let's pray. God, as we come to you this evening, we are guided by a prayer that has so much truth in it. And we ask for your Holy Spirit to minister to us as we offer words to you, thus allowing us to relinquish control, to find peace where there's chaos and uncertainty. God, enter into our circumstances and guide us as we look toward you, for you are the one who offers eternal life. We pray to you now, Lord, the first line of the prayer. Grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. God, we align ourselves with you and your desires for our lives. We recall your powerful words in the Gospel of John when you tell your disciples, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Lord, with trembling hands, trembling with awe, reverence, and wonder toward you, we beseech your mercy. We pray for this peace that in Philippians tells us surpasses all understanding, one that guards our hearts, minds, and wills in the love of Christ. We pray to you now, wherever we are, handing over to you that which we cannot change. Lord, infuse us with your peace by your powerful spirit. We reverentially hand to you now vocation, family, sustenance, the world economy, our own personal plight, what's happened to us in the past, what may happen, future, or what's happen happening to us now. God, we relinquish control. Receive these prayers. We offer personal prayers to you in silence.
God, continuing on, we pray the following verse of the prayer that reads, to grant me the courage to change the things I can. Lord, as we look toward the scriptures, we're reminded of countless forms of courage and the many examples where you command your people to live with fortitude and strength. Repeatedly throughout Joshua, we read, Be strong and be of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. God, your promise to be with us provides us with all the assurance we need to live bravely, boldly, and intentionally with our lives. We confess that at times fear creeps in. We quickly forget our identity. We are your children, beloved, cared for, cherished by you. We release fear and worry, and we invite you to outline for us in the coming days how we can be agents for change. We invite you in and we ask you to be our protector, to defend us from that which robs us of our joy and prevents us from being a conduit of your mercy, your love, your peace, and your grace in a world in need. Grant us courage to enact change. In silence, we surrender body, mind, and soul to do your will. And now, God, we pray for wisdom. We offer the prayer that we not only have courage to change the things we can, but also the wisdom to know the difference. As we read in the Psalms of David, I am your servant. Give me discernment that I may understand your statutes. And we look toward your promise to Solomon, to whom you gave a wise and discerning mind. We pray that we too might approach any and all circumstances with understanding understanding of how to steward our energy, will, and affections, that we would steward unto you only that which you call us to change. We pray for wisdom. And we give to you those areas of gray where we long to know if we could do more in relationships, in our work, in our day-to-day -day living, in this nation, and throughout our world. God, we pray for wisdom and guidance as we seek ways to confront COVID-19 and also to protect our neighbor and protect ourselves. Here now are these areas that we long to pray to you now in silence, or we long for wisdom. Hear our prayers. We now join our voices together, Lord, in the first phrase of the lesser known section of the serenity prayer. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as a pathway to peace. Lord, your word reminds us that each day is yours and that you only give us one day at a time. When we get ahead of this day that you have given us, that is when we begin to worry. In the Sermon on the Mount, you instructed us, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. In these uncertain times, it's easy to let our minds wander to the fears of what might be. Help us instead to rest in you, taking each moment as it comes, drawing our strength from you, using the words of the psalmist to remind us, God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. The Lord Almighty is with us. Difficult times draw us to the strength of your presence. We pause now in a moment of silence to relinquish our fears. Gracious God, we use the next phrase to move us deeper on in our prayer. 
taking as Jesus did this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it. Mighty Savior, you know that we are sinners, that this world is full of sin, rebellion, selfishness, and pride. Yet you still chose to come here in human form in order to bring salvation, mercy, and forgiveness. We find comfort in the words of the Apostle John telling us that God did not send his son into the world to, to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. This is your world filled with your children. You ask us to love one another the way that you have loved us. We take a moment to prayerfully seek who it is that you are calling us to love in this time taking the focus off ourselves and looking to others. God, we bring you the next phrase of this beautiful prayer. Trusting that you will make all things right if I surrender to your will powerful God. Times like this remind us that we are not in control. It is not up to us to make the world right. We know from your word and from our own lives that when we yield to you, you will put things right. So much of scripture tells us that this is true. Psalm 9 says, those who know your name trust in you, for you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. We trust that you have not forsaken us now and that you want us to seek you in this time of uncertainty and fear. Your perfect love casts out all fear. We look to your love and grace that we might not live in fear. Show us what fear we need to lay at your feet. We say together, Lord, the final phrase of this prayer that reminds us why we yield to you. So that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with you forever in the next. God of eternity, you have promised us something far sweeter than the struggles of this world. You have promised us an eternity in the fullness of your love, an eternity that makes the brightest moments of this life appear as the flicker of a candle in comparison to glory, to the glory of your presence and the richness of your love, completely unveiled. Oh, the supreme happiness of that place where there is no sin, no disease, no pride or jealousy, only the powerful love and presence. In this time of trouble, we cling to the promise of 1 Peter, and the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. Thank you, Lord, for this promise. It reminds us that this life will involve suffering, just like what we are experiencing. But you will restore us and call us to eternal glory. There is nothing greater. Thank you, Lord, for the wonders of technology that allow us to stay connected in a time requiring social isolation. We praise you that even though we can't gather in one place, we can gather in one spirit, your spirit that unifies us despite distance and trouble. We always have things to be thankful for because you are a good and gracious God. Amen. Thank you for joining us in this time of prayer in a season when so much has been canceled and so many of the freedoms that we're accustomed to seem to, be, to have been taken away from us. We are reminded that prayer is not canceled, that our faith has not been taken away from us, and that we do not need 
a sanctuary to gather and that God is not limited by the walls that where we gather and his presence is not blocked from us because of a virus. I encourage you in this time to reach out to one another. Just as we use technology to bring this prayer to you, this prayer time, or to bring Sunday morning worship to you, use the simplicity of your phone or the technology of your computer to be present with one another, to pray for each other, and to lift one another up. Blessings and good night.